Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescopes. I hope one of them at least. Anyway, do you guys remember where I did that video called Can a 6 inch, ref I guess reflecting telescope, see any deep sky objects? And I went to the park. That was about four months ago, four and a half months ago. Today, I'm in a Bortle 2 zone. And I have a, I guess you would consider this a small telescope. This is a 102 or a 4 inch F5 refractor, which is made for low power wide viewing. So we do have the moon out up there, and but it's the last quarter moon. So in a way, that actually isn't too bad. Or it's one day before the last quarter moon. So it's not putting out a huge amount of light pollution but some light pollution. Now, I also did a video, I believe was last year, maybe nine months ago or so, and it was called, How Much Light Pollution Does a Full Moon Give? Now, on that video, I was also up here in a Bortle 2 zone or a gray zone. And I said in that video, it seemed like it was probably at least a zone 6 with a full moon. Um, so I brought it from a zone 2, when there's no moon, to a full moon, which is like a zone at least 6. 6 and a half, maybe. So it's better than being at home, but not great. Especially if you come almost, uh, you know, two and a half hours away. Now today being the last, one day before the last quarter moon, the light output is probably half. So... It's actually a good thing because as you guys know, most times when new people and they live in a Bortle 9, which is the worst, a Bortle 8, they are just happy if they can get to a Bortle 6, let's say, or a Bortle 5. That's dark to most new people getting into the hobby when they get away from the city. I know my first time when I went from Toronto or a Bortle 8 uh, to a Bortle 4, it seemed like it was pitch black um, type of thing. And um, that was thrilling. And at that time, I only brought an 80 millimeter F5 small acro, the smaller brother of this one. And I still saw some decent stuff. So my thinking why the, almost the last quarter moon is perfect for here, because, as I said, most new people ain't going to get to like a Bortle 1 or a Bortle 2. They're lucky if they get to a 3. So probably, like I said, most new people, when they do get away, because they don't understand how far the light pollution extends from even a small town as uh, little as a thousand people. Anyway, so my thinking is they probably get away to like a Bortle 4 to 5. So my thinking is, here being it's a two, this almost last quarter moon is probably going to bring it up to about four to four and a half, maybe even a five, which is still kind of dark for some people, but not truly dark. Probably getting close to 1 a.m. to start now is very late. Normally, um, probably between two to three is where I max out. So to start now is kind of... Uh, late but it's better than nothing um, i am using my sv bony az 225 and i am using my good solid tripod here and i just want to take a look at some of the brighter deep sky stuff and i'm going to tell you what i think using a small four inch f5 refracting telescope better than using a six inch in a eight zone so let's get to it Okay, so we just took a look at the Andromeda galaxy. Now, the bad thing is, even with your moon, the moon puts out a light pollution that's about 30% in all directions. Now, the one thing I noticed is when you get further, then it, it is definitely, you can tell it's darker. But anyway, you could see it, but last time I was up here, I think three weeks ago, with no moon, it looked three, four times brighter. Now, you can see it. It's nothing spectacular, but I think it is a bit better than a six inch from an eight zone. Let's go to something else. 
Okay, now with the Hercules cluster, I mean, it's getting kind of low, but you could see it. Uh, not, not the pinpoint of stars like you sometimes see in a bigger 8 to 12 inch, uh, like I normally bring up here would be a 12 inch, but in a 4 inch up here, so it's equivalent to a 4.5 to 5 zone, medium better than a 6 inch in an 8 zone. So the double cluster with a 9.7 millimeter uh, super palazzo is, is decent, but really I would say it's comparable, I guess, to the six inch in the eight zone. If this is roughly about a five zone, a four inch, I, I would say they're fairly close. Uh, it doesn't look so spectacular, but you can see there's two little tiny uh, clusters uh, in the same field of view. If there was no moon, it'd be okay-ish. I call it the J cluster, but it's called the coat hang cluster. Um, it looks easily from here, but it looks easily from back home as well. I would say it's a tie. That one is so easy to find. And it's about the same. I don't think it's any better in any of them. Okay, okay we're going to try the wild duck cluster. I mean, again, it's, it's still pretty high, but you can see it's in the western uh, sky. The problem is with this light... It, it kind of interferes, but otherwise you're not going to see me uh, out here. But anyway, it's it's kind of dim. For even though, okay, equivalent to f a zone five, let's say this small four inch f five uh, with a thirty two millimeter to find it. It's just a small little glow. You pump it up to a nine point seven, which isn't a lot of power. I would say it's comparable to the six inch at, at home. I don't think it's brighter here because again, this telescope is kind of low power. I think I'm going to be able to see the veil or the North American. I don't think so with, with the moon out. Looking at Saturn, I have a the 9.7 millimeter and a five times Barlow uh, Teleview Power Mate. It actually looks uh, pretty good in this telescope. Remember, this telescope is meant for low power wide field viewing. Normally the planets don't look so good. It actually looks better than when I used the Takahashi at home. Video that I said the first uh, look at uh, the Takahashi, but it was much lower in the sky. So I would think uh, it would do much better right now, but uh, and it looks pretty good here. So I figured, let me try for the ring nebula. I started with a 12 and a half, and I just caught it because I know it's kind of small, right? But I, you can see it. I now got it to a 9.7 with a two times Barlow. It is, you can kind of see it, but I'm not sure. But I can't remember in that video that I did at home, uh, the six inch, I don't think I looked at the ring nebula. So I can't really say on that one, uh, I'll have to look back at the video, but you could see it you know, with the 4-inch F5 refractor, but it's nothing spectacular, but you can see it. I would say it's okay, medium-ish. So I was able to find uh, NGC, I think it's 436, which is the ET cluster or the OWL uh, cluster, the man that's um, holding his hands out. So in a... And I put a 12.4 Super Palazzo because I need a little power and easily see. Um, I can't remember if we did see uh, that specific one with the 6 inch in the 8 zone. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, you could see that. And the clusters are, you know, the easy ones probably will be fairly easy. But this is a nice one that I like to normally show people. I think Jupiter is rising, but I would have to go over there. Um, and I think the Pleiades is not too... Okay, I went all the way to the road over here. So I can see Jupiter. I used a 9.7 millimeter Jupiter over there. Mars. And the Pleiades, I don't know if we can see it in here. But uh, anyway, in Jupiter, there's the 9.7 with 
I thought I had the five times Bartle. No, is the two times Bartle. On the platies, of course, the, uh, I believe it's the 26 millimeter Super Plaza that looked easy. Mars, we use in uh, 9.7. And the two times Bartle. It's not a whole lot of power, but it didn't look that great. I still look tiny, tiniest um, red thing. Anyway, that's it for today. Let's call it a night. Hopefully tomorrow is going to be a little bit better. Like, comment, and subscribe. Join the members. Videos if you like. I put a video up once a month. And I put your name on the description. It's only 99 cents. Why not you? Why not me? It's becoming very dewy now. How's the lens? Oh, lens looks good. What would be better? Or will it be comparable? A six inch reflecting telescope in a white zone or like a Bordeaux zone eight is that it changed a Bordeaux two zone to about a Bordeaux five. As I said in the video, one time I did that last year where I compared a full moon and I found it to be at least a Bortle, let's say six and a half. When I was looking at Jupiter, the Pleiades and Mars, you could walk around, it was casting a shadow. So even the uh, quarter moon puts out a lot of light. Here's my conclusion. I think if you're looking for the deep sky stuff, more like, I mean, I, we saw Andromeda, Hercules was, you could see it, but you can't see individual stars. Now, mind you, in Hercules, I didn't really push, push the power. I could have, but it, that scope is really meant as a low power scope anyway. If you're looking for those deep sky stuff like the nebulas and galaxies, a four inch refracting telescope F5 in a Bordeaux for five zone, let's say, is still small. You can see some of the, the brighter stuff. I would probably recommend go to a six inch minimum if you can go bigger because you're just going to see even though you can see that stuff you're going to see it better so aperture is important as we say aperture rules in this hobby but they say actually sky condition is actually more important than aperture light pollution then aperture so if you're stuck in the city and all you can afford is maybe a six inch you could see a lot you know the planets the moon um, double stars lots of clusters uh, everything else is going to be disappointing from like a portal eight zone if you only have up to a six inch or smaller uh, forget about really the nebulous globular clusters and galaxies that i think forget about it but if you get to at least a portal four to five I would say try to get at least a six inch if you can would be a good percentage better than how I saw it. Let's say if there was no moon and we used a four inch refractor as I did uh, two weeks ago, uh, then it will be 50% better than what I saw last night just because that moon does make a big difference how I saw Andromeda two weeks ago in that same telescope and this week makes a big difference the extensions of the Andromeda got wiped out um, so it looks more like the pictures but still I would say even if you can get to a Bortle 2 or 3 even with a 4 inch refractor I would say Try to go bigger. If you can go to the six inch, that will make a big difference in collecting 50% more light gathering power. It makes a big difference. If you could go bigger to eight, then go for it too. But anyway, so I think it's the the difference, the four, the four inch refractor from a Bordeaux four and a half, five zone still, I think wins over the six inch reflector over in a Bordeaux eight zone, but not by a huge amount. It's, it's not just on those like galaxies and nebulas uh, and globular clusters, it's gonna win. But even a six inch in the city, you can see a lot of open clusters which are still fairly bright and easy. Um, that's it guys, cheers.